evening, sir. Very good evening. How are you, Sankar? Fine, sir. Great. How was the picnic? Very good evening. How are you? Yes, sir. Great, sir. Okay. So Tarun, I think, will join late so we can do start. Okay, sure. So, let me share the screen. There is some background noise coming. Uh, one second, sir. Uh, is it fine now? Yeah, it's not yeah, bad. So we stopped that periodic property. We have actually discussed the resemblance of hydrogen with alkali metals and similarly with the halogens. That is the position of hydrogen we have discussed, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we have started the next chapter that is the study of first element of the periodic table that is the hydrogen. So we have studied the position of hydrogen. Our next topic will be the uh, what is the occurrence of this hydrogen, what are the sources, and then we, we will see the preparation. Yet, you did uh, you were absent? Uh, oh, you were absent at that time. So can you just uh, recap a little bit? Like a quick recap. Yeah, sure. I Exactly. Actually, see, we have discussed what is the position of hydrogen in which I have just uh, told you that hydrogen, it has anomalous position. Anomalous means that it actually uh, resembles with the group first, that is the alkali metals. And along with that, it differs from the first, that is the alkali metals. Also, it also resembles with the group 17 elements that is halogen and but it also, yes. yeah differs differs from the halogen so that means its position it is not uh, confined it's not fixed it is not proper so it is just placed at the top of the PR table so it it has some properties which are just quite different from the alkali metals from the group first elements and similarly it has some properties which are uh, just resembling with the halogens, that is group 17 elements. So neither we can place it with the alkali metals, nor we can place it this hydrogen with the group 17. So that is why it is separately studied. That is why we are having the complete unit, the chapter that is the hydrogen. So uh, let's first see the various uh, sources and the occurrence. I will write it here. Occurrence and sources of this hydrogen that's h2 i have told you that it's known as dihydrogen and why it is known as hydrogen because actually it means hydro means water and gen means generator so that means it's water producing water generating when it reacts with oxygen it forms water yes. uh, so yes. can you tell me that if we just talk of this hydrogen uh, it is the most abundant element in the universe so this is very important that you will remember this that it is the most abundant element in the universe that means in the whole universe yes sir this is the yes, most having the most abundance that means it occurs in a very huge amount but uh, where it is is it on the earth's crust or in the atmosphere or somewhere else can you tell me the every, I mean, everywhere both sir no if we just uh, check out the earth's crust and the atmosphere it is there but it's in very minute quantity but I told that it is the most abundant element in, so in the, the whole, whole universe. universe. Means like if you take everything exactly. other than Earth, I mean, including Earth, means it will be abundant. Exactly. So that means it is actually in the sun and stars and other planets. Just we are having the big planets like uh, Jupiter and Saturn. They are completely made up of hydrogen. We are having sun. We are having other stars. They are completely made up of hydrogen. Yes. So you have to remember this. Yes. But it is the most abundant element in the universe. Yes, 
So now here, you will also remember that it is just 70% of the total mass of the universe. 70% of total mass of universe. That means if we just talk of a mass of universe, the 70% mass, it is just that of hydrogen. But it is uh, not too much in the Earth's crust. It is, but it is very in minute quantity. Similarly, it occurs in the air also. Yeah. Yeah. So I will write it here that also the other sources of this hydrogen, they are your Earth's crust. Earth's crust. And along with that, this hydrogen also occurs in free state in atmosphere. So, but you have to remember that the major source that is where it is the most abundant that is actually the sun, stars, and, the stars, oh, and Jupiter. Jupiter. yeah, planets. Okay. That is the okay. Jupiter, Saturn. So, these are completely made up of hydrogen. So, hydrogen, that's why it's the most abundant element in the whole universe. Yes, now, similarly, if we just uh, see in the Earth's crust, it occurs in the sometimes when whenever there is volcanic eruption, so it just comes out in the form of volcanic geese. Uh, yes, similarly, yes, yeah, you will remember that it is the third most abundant element on the surface of Earth. You will write it here that it is the third most abundant element. Third most abundant element on the surface of Earth. Abundant element on the surface of Earth. So if we just talk of only the surface of Earth, then it is it comes on the third rank third most abundant element. So it occurs in the combined form in various uh, compounds, in various salts, in various organic compounds. Whatever organic compounds, they are the just sources of hydrogen. Because if we just uh, see the hydrocarbons, isn't it? Organic compounds are big sources of this hydrogen. Because if we just talk of hydrocarbons, what are those hydrocarbons? They are the compounds of hydrogen and carbon. So that means they contain the hydrogen. So organic, yes, compounds, yeah, organic compounds are completely made up of, uh, we can say these, uh, that is hydrogen. the hyd hydrogen. Hydrogen exactly. and carbon. carbon. Exactly. There is carbon, but uh, this time we are just talking of only the sources of hydrogen. So that means you can say that organic compounds are the big yes, sources sir. of this hydrogen. And it is the most abundant element in the universe and the third uh, yes, most abundant element on the surface of Earth. Then let's just come. I hope that we have discussed the isotopes of hydrogen. I hope you yes, already sir. remember those. Right? Yes, sir. Exactly. It's a protium, deuterium, tritium. Tritium. Exactly. Let's, let's write here the preparation of dihydrogen, the preparation of hydrogen. Preparation of dihydrogen. I have told you that we you can just call it as hydrogen, but it is actually exists as a diatomic molecule. The atoms it is two, so that's why it's known as dihydrogen. So if we just talk of its preparation, uh, first preparation is simply from water. So this is very important preparation, and question is asked from this one. So that is from water. So that means we can prepare this uh, hydrogen from water because we know that what is actually water. Water is H2O. H2O. There, is hydrogen. there is hydrogen in this water. So that means we can prepare hydrogen from this uh, water. So let's see how to prepare. Uh, it is simply by reacting metal with this water. So we are having some metals which are very really active metals. That means which are reactive metals. They just react with water at room temperature. That means they react with cold water and they produce the hydrogen. So yes. I will write it here that first you will write 
highly reactive metals reaction with highly reactive metals reaction with highly reactive metals highly active or you can say highly reactive metals uh, what are the highly reactive metals they are just your alkali and alkaline earth metals so for example if you just write here um, highly reactive metals we are having uh, sodium yeah we are having the potassium we are having the calcium yeah these are highly reactive metals for example if i just write a reaction here that of sodium for example we are here having the sodium and i'm just reacting it with uh, water but this water it is not at very high temperature that means you can say just it is a cold water it reacts with cold water hot yes. water or yes. the boiled water or the steam is not required here why because sodium is highly reactive now can you tell me what will be the product product will be your sodium hydroxide plus h2 and h2 yeah hydrogen gas will get created now can you balance this it's very really easy to balance okay 2h2o then no, 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 no. okay just try to balance 2na plus 2h2o no no 2na plus one second sir one second okay you can try i have already balanced 2na plus 2h2o gives 2naoh plus h2 exactly yeah it is now balanced right yes, sir. so have you noted down this shall i move to the next page yes sir so one second sir i'll just okay sure, sure. yes sir okay so this is the reaction of highly reactive metal that is sodium with cold water or you can say water at room temperature it is the sodium then uh, let's see the reaction of potassium i hope you can yourself write the reaction the of potassium thing, no exactly it's the same thing because of potassium one but still exactly its valence is one so it will be koh plus h2 oh h2 so one yeah, second so how is it n okay, okay nothing sodium so symbol is n h2 2 plus two. Oh, okay sorry yeah 2h2 so 2h2 exactly so similarly if i just write here the calcium so can you now write the reaction yourself Yes, sir. Ca yes, plus H two O gives CaO twice plus H two. Yeah, it will be CaOH twice because calcium valence is two. Yeah. So then it H two. So can you balance this? Two C no no. Sorry, balance. Sir. It is not balanced. Oh yet. no, two H two O. Two H two O. That's it. Two two H two O, sir. Yeah, I was right. It is now balanced. Uh, so this is a, re a reaction of highly reactive metals and when this reaction takes place uh, you have to remember that these reactions are very very much exothermic in nature so what is what do you mean by exothermic so they, uh, ev they uh, evolution of they release heat. evolution heat. release heat yeah, evolution of heat release of heat so. heat energy is released here or evolved here heat energy is evolved so that's why they are highly exothermic and reaction is very much vigorous so that means actually what happens when a reaction is very much vigorous and it is highly exothermic so the hydrogen gas which is evolved here it gets fire so exothermic reaction and being vigorous so what about like if we use normal or hot water the fire will be more vigorous exactly why not that's why they are just reacting with the cold water so if it is already hot then it will catch fire as soon as we just put these highly reactive metals in that hot water so being uh, vigorous and reaction being a highly exothermic reaction so what happens the hydrogen gas evolved catch fire 
hydrogen gas evolve it catch back so that's why sometimes you have seen in the videos that when this sodium it is just put in water there is sudden uh, fire exactly it is actually due to this reaction hydrogen gas evolve it catches the fire because because reaction is highly exothermic and yes, it's uh, very weak so, so you have to remember this yes okay then let's see how less reactive metals will react less reactive metals so next we will write here reaction with less reactive metals sir is this reactivity based on the reactivity table yeah exactly yeah. exactly okay. series you have seen yeah, on your text Know that potassium is highly reactive then it is the sodium then it is the calcium if you just remember the order of reactivity potassium is highly reactive then it is the sodium then it is the calcium isn't it then it is the aluminium this is the activity series what you have studied yeah it is the same okay now reaction with less reactive metals if we just talk of less reactive metals how they react with water and will there be production of hydrogen gas or not let's see okay, like so let's to to no reaction sir just for having zinc they are having neutral yeah having a so it's like little to no reaction with water no reaction will take place i will tell you how reaction actually here takes place okay i'm saying so little to no less reactive metals we are having magnesium is my less reactive metal so if we just treat it with water but here this should not be the cooled water that means they just react only with hot water so you have to remember here the water should be hot so what is the difference between hot water and cold water sir yeah hot and cold water cold. means when temperature no, no, is when temperature like... so he's asking okay, what difference does it make yeah like what difference does it make it's the re reaction to be faster there are some reactions which actually take place at very low temperature but there are some reactions which actually require temperature and what happens due to this temperature due to the temperature there is increase in the randomness there is increase in the moment of the molecules and when molecules they are in motion that means they have more energy when there is more energy then they can easily break the bond and make the new bond so that's why some time is reactions which occur at very high temperature so we have to give them high temperature wherever it is required it's just like so I here think... yeah tell me nothing okay okay so sometimes for, for example it is just like for example if we just cook anything in our kitchen sometimes we have to heat it we have to heat it and we have to give a maximum heat uh, so that reaction will take place and our food will get cooked right yes so the anomaly exactly like that yeah so when magnesium reacts with the hot water it also produces the hydrogen gas and it here forms the magnesium oxide and we get the hydrogen so can you balance this so that's it it's already balanced exactly it is already balanced okay so can you tell me also the reaction of zinc with this hot water sir it is the same Zed thing so same thing exactly it will be zinc oxide Zed plus no h2 plus h2 exactly same but can you give me the reaction with aluminum this reaction will yeah. be asked aluminum because it two gives alo see al2o3 plus h2 and And the, no sir, two Al plus H uh, H2O gives a ah uh, yeah yeah two Al. Do you remember H2O. that valency of aluminium is three? Do you remember yes. that the valency so of aluminium is three? Sir, two yeah. Al plus three. Okay. Al plus two Al plus three H2O gives. Okay. Three H2O gives Al two O three plus three H2. Exactly. Yes. So just write down this. Yes, sir. Done, sir. Hey, is it only for me or is it for you guys also that they're not updating the chemistry work? Uh, the start. So, huh? so, so we got. Area. 
yeah if we are having highly reactive metal then it reacts with the cold water if we are having less active metals then it reacts with the hot water right yes sir. so is this uh, so, so what is water does aluminum react with like normal water hot aluminum will not react with the normal water hot. because it is less hot. reactive metal. it's also hot no so like hot, right, hot. like hot or cold water or normal Hot. Yeah, it's hot. hot. I have told that these, uh, whether it is zinc, whether it is magnesium, whether it is aluminium, all these three cases, they will require hot water. Got it? Sir, why does it not that... react with cold water? Sir? Because they are less reactive. Actually, it depends on, everything depends on the reactivity. Everything depends on the reactivity. When we are having like, so highly reactive... Like, yes, sir. The hotter the water. How does the reactivity, like, uh, like, uh, how is reactivity? Actually, see, actually, see, whenever some reaction takes place, there is energy is required for the reaction to take place. That energy is known as activation energy. Since highly reactive metals, they require very less activation energy. So that's why they just occur, reaction occurs at room temperature. But we are, whenever we have less reactive metals, activation energy required is very much high so that's why we require here the hot water temperature is sir, actually so required reactivity in is indirectly proportional to temperature you just find out there is loopholes bro see actually see it uh, sometimes some reactions they occur at very low temperature so you can't say that it's inversely proportional to the temperature some reactions they occur at high temperature but some reactions they occur at low temperature it actually depends on the activation energy which you will just study in the higher classes i will write down it here the term is known as activation energy so some reactions they require very low activation energy so that means they can just occur at a low temperature room temperature but some reactions they occur at very high temperature that means they require very lot of activation energy getting yes sir. okay now let's see there are also some metals which neither react with cold water nor they react with the so hot water uh, what are the properties of this what so which properties? Even, like like the properties of reaction with this metals, we didn't even learn. Properties of alkali that. metals. Release no, no, no. less reactive metals. Less. Uh, see, you have some. You have simply remember that if metals are highly reactive, they will just react at low temperature. That means they will just uh, react with cold water. Highly reactive metals. And similarly, if there are less reactive metals, you have to remember that they will react with hot water just you have to remember only this then we are having the metals like iron and nickel iron and nickel so they need these like are the steam. two yes they need like steam right so to like react exactly, exactly. iron and nickel they are very less reactive so that means they require steam for reaction to take place only react with steam Wait, only they react to when you're not talking yeah you can just mute your microphone so that there is no background noise so now see here if i'm just having iron this reaction will be very important i just told that iron does not react with cold water it also does not react with the hot water but it can react with steam so steam means when you are having water at very high temperature good greater than 100 degrees celsius right okay yes sir. can you tell me what will be the product here this is very important reaction FAO Anybody plus tell? H2. Uh, sir, sir, FAO, FAO plus H2. Uh, sir, F, F, what, F, okay. <laughs> FAO, what, F, No, like uh, FE3, like FE2 plus FE3. It will be FE3O4 that is known as. Uh, sir, is it uh, very dangerous, like the one reactor? Yeah. More, if they don't give, ma'am, so like take it three, Peric. Like if they don't give, most commonly. It is just if. Uh, it is known as yeah, ferrosofiric oxide. So, okay, that means there is ferric is ferro. But it's ferro. Yeah, exactly. Ferric. Is plus, yes, ferro means when it is just plus two. What? I'll write it ferric? here. The it's actually containing both, so that's why we are reading it as ferrosofiric oxide. It's like 
it's like two plus three or two into three or what? I will yeah, tell you. It's actually two plus three, four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> okay, I will tell you. Don't worry. It is just a mixed oxide. Mixed oxide means it actually contains two oxides. One is your FeO, and another is your Fe2O3. But Got it now? Oxide three, sir. <laughs> Isn't okay, I will tell you. It, it is. It is. It is FeO. When it is FeO, it is known as ferrous oh, oxide. When it is okay, FeO, okay, 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 yeah. So it's ferrous ferrous <laughs> oxide plus ferric oxide, basically. Exactly. Is, Your ferrous oxide okay. plus ferric oxide. It's a mixed oxide. You have to remember that this Fe3O4 it is a mixed oxide. Oh, so okay. here iron is in plus two oxidation state, and here iron is in plus three oxidation state. That means this one is your ferrous, and this one is your ferric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, can you balance this? So three uh, Fe yes, plus three Fe plus no four H two. Uh, Fe three O four plus no, it's four H two. So it's three Fe plus four H two O gives Fe three O four plus four H two O. Four H two O. I was right. Exactly. Sir, so there's a balancing okay. equation and a balancing equation. Yeah, it is now balancing. Now, if I just if I just tell you that uh, whatever these reactions I have written down here, can you tell me in which reaction we can just produce the large or we can see the large scale preparation for this dihydrogen? Uh, sir, the, it's the industrial I method. Is the Haber's fourth. No, wait, my bad. What is, uh, oh, it's from this uh, coke. If you just uh, remember this reaction, reaction of uh, iron with the steam, it is known as Lannes process. So this is uh, the one of the method with the help of which you can just prepare large quantity of hydrogen. It's the Lannes industrial process. method of. That's yeah, exactly. It's one of, it is one of the industrial method of preparation. One. Mm. Yes. Sir. So, but when it comes to nickel, it's simple, right? So just Ni plus uh, H2O gives Ni uh, two no NiO plus H2. That's it, right? So exactly, exactly. When it it is nickel, then it will be reaction will be simple, simple. That is NiO and H2. I hope that you can write that yourself. Yes. Okay. Sir. Shall I, I write everything next? myself? Sir. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you should always write yourself in your whole life. Because you have to compete with the whole world. So I wrote for Thomas hands for Brooks. So. I wrote for Kongwell also so, and his hands for Brooks. So. Yeah. No, yeah. One, wrote for you. Like no one wrote for you and your fingers broke. I wrote for myself. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I said don't need it. Like two fingers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what is this called? Layens process? The yeah, Lannes lane. process, yeah. This one process. reaction, that reaction of iron with steam, this is known as Lannes process. And with this Lannes process, we can just have a large scale production of hydrogen. So they'll ask large the largest, scale. or they will ask one of the large scale products. Yeah, for example, if sometimes in your exam it's asked that uh, which industrial method produces large scale. Uh, large scale quantity of this hydrogen, then you will remember it is the Lannes process that is simply the reaction of iron with steam. So, but what if in the school they didn't teach this and uh, expects uh, expects us to answer Haber's process or something yeah. like that? Haber's process is just for the preparation of ammonia. Haber's process is the preparation yeah, but, uh, of not ammonia. Haber's process, Haber's like something else. Um, no, no, sir, there is I'll be one. back in a few more minutes. Sir. I'll just have to set up my computer. Okay, I sure. Okay, so, yes, so, yes, so, I understand. I will also tell you more industrial or the commercial methods, but this is one of the methods that is the Lannes process with which so, like, you can yeah, prepare like, large name quantity. The following, I can name anyone. Yeah, exactly. I will tell you also the water gaze shift reaction. That is also one of the important reactions that we will study. We will just go one by one. So just tell me that. Shall I move to the next page? So you can. OK, now the next uh, it was the reaction from preparation from water, right? Yes. So the ones that then, do not react at all. 
Oh, no, yeah, that is the gold that. platinum. Exactly. They will not react they, because they do okay. not dissolve in water. That is the gold platinum. We are having copper. We are having mercury. They are the least, yeah, they, they are the least reactive metals. They will just not react with the uh, water. I hope you can remember that. That is the gold platinum, isn't it? Mercury, yeah. they do not react with the water. That means they cannot produce hydrogen uh, when reacting with water. Okay, now let me write here the next. That is by electrolysis of water. Do you remember what is electrolysis of water? So when the passage of electricity, a decomposition reaction occurs. So exactly. So I have my gold necklace in the wash basin. What? By electrolysis of water. So if we just have water, we are just passing the electric current. That is, we are just doing the electrolysis. Who's listening? Not me. Nice. There is my phone, like my sister's watching. Just uh, to open, your, open your camera so that I will see which is active in the class. Yes, yes. Yes. Sir. Okay, we are here having the hydrogen and oxygen. I mean, I did turn on my camera. Do not care. Don't need to remove the top one. So this is the industrial method. So like you need some water and you can get so much hydrogen. Yeah, exactly. But actually, see, this is uh, not treated as one of the industrial method. It is just the electrolysis of water. Actually, when you do the electrolysis of large quantity of water, then you get hydrogen gas from this. So. I will tell you the industrial method is one of the method I have already told you. That industrial was the land process. Industrial are classified only because of their efficiency, right? So efficiency, the number. The exactly. There should be efficiency and there should be large quantity. So now here I you will also say. remember small amount of acid or base are also required here. Small acid or base. Then we can just do the electrolysis because pure water is bad conductor of electricity, isn't it? Yes. 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 Yeah, exactly. Pure water is bad conductor of electricity, so that's why we are just putting some small amount of acid or base here. So this is yes. also another method of preparation. Then let's see the next one. That's actually by the reaction of metals on acids. So reaction with acids. Reaction of metal with acids. Reaction of metals with acids so for example if we are just having this zinc and i am reacting it with sulfuric acid h2so4 it's my mineral acid so i hope you can just balance it yes uh, zinc sulfate plus hydrogen zn so four plus Zen. h2 this is dilute h2so4 do, do you understand what is this dilute h2so4 dilute means when uh, like there is this. water right it's yes. so plus h2 so is this exactly. Exactly. Because, exactly. because it is uh, displacement reaction exactly oh, it is uh, sure just displacement it is it's a, uh, house, sir. Hey, it's a displacement reaction it's a radical <laughs> Because hydrogen has been displaced by zinc, so it is a uh, displacement reaction. Don't worry, don't. This decom oh, double hey. No, that's also not. No, no, it, okay, it, okay, okay. It is just uh, yeah. not in What? What double. it is? So, yes, the next one. Okay, now t can you tell me the product here in this magnesium when it reacts with dilute? Uh, uh, Hydrochloric acid that is HCl. So MgCl, MgCl2 plus H2. Yeah, exactly. Magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So I hope you can balance it. Can you balance it? HCl gives MgCl2 plus H2. That's it. I'm right. So that's it. That's it. Already written there. I wrote, I told, and then Malisha wrote it. Okay, then tell me iron if it reacts with chloric acid. HCl. Ferric or ferrous, sir? 
Fer, it's F E. Yeah, Fer, Ferret or Ferris. Uh, it will be Ferris. Okay. That's F E C L. Ferret is F E C L. F E C L two plus H two. Plus H two. So two H two. Exactly two. 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 <laughs> it is now all in done. <laughs> Yes, sir. You can go to the next one. Got it. So, what about bases, sir? Can they react metals with bases also? Chlor, chlor exactly. Exactly. Metals can react, one. and they can produce the hydrogen gas. I will. Sir, I will write those reactions. Yeah. Exactly. Chlorine. 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 Everything. Hypochlorite. Oh, that is everything the is one negative. Negative. Oh, it's ion is negative only. I forgot. The so chlorine, chlorate, hypochlorite. Everything is one, right, sir? Yes. Yes, yeah. Sure. So now, can you tell me that why we are not using the nitric acid? It's gonna go boom. No. <laughs> why? Um, why nit nitric acid is not, not used in the reactive? They're not that reactive. Nitric acid. No. Nitric Two acid is highly reactive. Sir, it is H two N O three, right? I will write it here. Yeah, it is no, H N O three. H N O three. Oh, H, -N -O -3. H -N -O -3. So nitric acid <laughs> is not used here. Can you tell me why? Sir, because sir, 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 sir. Oh, sir, yeah. because, uh, other, sir, because, uh, because uh, elements okay. like magnesium they can't displace. Uh, it is actually a strong oxidizing agent. Yeah, that's can you what tell I was me what is say. it can't displace that means it's an oxidizer. It can draw hydrogen, this thing you can just can... easily displace. That's not the case. Can you tell me what is oxidizing agent? Oxidizing Sir. agent is what loses uh, no, what Sir, is the it's... reason behind oxid oxidization to happen occur? Exactly. I have written down the definition which I have already told you that oxidizing agent is that which helps in oxidation but itself undergoes reduction, right? Yes. I hope you remember. Okay. So reducing okay. Now, reduction. which helps in oxidation? See, actually, what happens? For example, if I'm just having this, uh, let's say I'm having zinc, I'm treating it with nitric acid, HNO3. Nitric acid is HNO3. Now, if it reacts with this, what it forms? It forms the zinc nitrate. That is ZN NO3 hole twice. ZN NO3 hole twice plus H. And it produces no, it does. It produces first H2, but that it that actually undergoes oxidation and forms the water. So we don't get here the H2. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and H2 we also get the and then NO3. Oh, sorry, NO3 yeah. is. Uh... One my uh, one minus right. Sorry, I thought NO3 exactly. was one minus. Exactly. Yes. Three and NO2 are one minus. Sir. Ah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I thought I thought we, NO3 NO3 was two minus, and I told H2 NO3. No, NO3 is one minus. So when it will be zinc nitrate, it will be NO3 whole twice. Z Zn that is zinc NO3 whole twice. Now, can you balance this? This is very important. Uh, and uh, sir, two, sir, two at the HNO3. Okay, just try your on your yeah. just notebook, then tell me. Okay, okay, sir, there three here. Oh, I got, yes, yeah, so I got I'll kill you if you get it wrong, sir. <laughs> so... Yeah, tell me. Don't kill me, but I'll try saying. I do not care. Sir, there should be a four at H and North. Oh, that's a lot. Of... Ah, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> four. Sir, this is not a possibility. Is it not possible to balance? I don't know, sir. <laughs> Just try, try, try it. It will get balanced. You, ah, if you just oh, first. Oh, oh, now I get it, sir. Okay, no, tell me. Yes, no. sir. Four at HNO three, and then, uh, and then uh, two at NO and uh, two at H two O. Am I right? Sir is not replying. Four so at. 
4 at HNO3 and then what? Uh, 2 at NO and 2 at H2O. Okay, let me try it here. If you are just no, saying no, 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 that no, no, 4 sir, here. I'm almost done. So I'm doing amazing, sir. Just one second, sir. Okay, done. Do it, Hachi. I'm almost done. Is, so oxygen atoms balanced here? No, like I'm almost done. Um, oxygen atoms are not balanced here. Uh, I'm almost done, sir. One second. Okay, okay. Oh, I need two more. Sir, we can add a plus or two. <laughs> it, it, it is not getting balanced by four. That means you will just try it by five. If it is not still getting balanced, you will try it by six, then, then eight. Okay, tell me. Oh, you already did it? Oh, oh certain dude. So I got it as um three ZN plus eight HNO3 and then three uh, ZN, uh, three ZNO3 twice. T Plus, okay, tell me three times that eight times HNO3. Okay, then yes, three ZN plus eight okay. HNO3, and then okay. uh, three ZNO3 twice. Okay, plus two NO, no, actually, two four H2O. Okay, plus two NO. Okay, so have you just checked it out? Yes, sir. ZN, ZN, 3, 3, and then hydrogen here, 8, here of uh, 4 into 2, 8, that's gone, and then NO3, here, NO, uh, I'll take individually, N2 into 2, N2 to 4, uh, no, 4, four, four plus 4, 8. Oh, yeah. No, 4 plus 4, 8, so N is also balanced. Yeah, exactly, four, exactly. it's balanced. Yeah. Correct. Sir, what all did you do, sir? Like, uh, there. See, I just told that if it is not getting balanced by four, then you have to just try it by five, then six, sir, then like, seven, and like finally before. So, like before, it is just hit and run. Previous slide. Can you go to previous, the previous slide? slide? That is this. Okay, sure. Previous slide is this one. Eight. So you were that, huh? Oh, I, I, yeah, I know this next slide only, so now I'm answer. I just want okay, to so Okay, so have you noted down that why we are not using the nitric acid? Because if we just use the nitric acid, it is a strong oxidizing agent. It will just produce water. It will not produce the hydrogen. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, now there is another question for you that why we are not using the hot sulfuric acid i just uh, uh, use it here the dilute sulfuric and the cool be because zinc and magnesium are less reactive but they are reactive with hot okay i will first write down Basically, here that HNO3 we are not three takes more like preparation time, that's why we use certain plus H2SO4. No, no, it's I will strong, so it's impossible. So you, will, you, will, you will first write that hot H2SO4 is not also use it. It is also not use it because when we actually use the hot H2SO4, then it forms the sulfur dioxide and water. We don't get the hydrogen there. Uh, uh, is s 2 is H2SO4 present in our body? No, HCl is present in our body, not H2SO4. Uh, not in the because... stomach, anywhere else. No, it is not anywhere else. Oh. Okay. Now tell me what will be the product here. So if I'm just using this hot H2SO4, I'm treating it with zinc. It will become what? Zinc sulfate. H2. Sulfur dioxide and water. Ah. That means here also we are not getting the hydrogen gas so when it's hot. It works, right? We'll get water and then we can do the same thing with water and we'll get it. Yeah, okay. Now tell me, is it balanced? Sir? Can you balance this? I'll balance. So it's balanced. No, it's oh, not. Maybe it's not. Yeah, it's not. What? It's not balanced. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Z Zn plus okay. 2H2SO4 
gives okay. uh then as a four I'll plus two as a four. That's that's it. I'll write it, sir. I'll write it. I'll write. No, not two as a four, sir. Just normal as a four. See, as a four. Okay, normal. normal. All right. Well, Jaran, Jaran, correct. H two is a four here. Four here, correct. S it's easy to balance. Here, two here, correct. Four here. Yes, sir. It's balanced. That's it. Oh, no, it's, it's not balanced. Ah, oh, yeah, it's balanced. Why? Okay. No, it's balanced. Hey, what does say one thing? Da. I saw you put the sword. It yes, is balanced. Yes, it's balanced. Okay. But I didn't write it down yet. Okay, write down. Then I will move to the next page. Yes, sir. I'm done. Yes, sir. You can go to the next page. Okay, so these uh, two things are very important. That nitric acid, why it is not used? Because it will then produce the water and NO. And similarly, hot H2SO4, it is also not used because it will just produce the sulfur dioxide, right? Yes, sir. So uh, for nitric acids, you said it's not used because it is a strong oxidizing agent. What's the reason behind H2SO4, hot H2SO4? Yeah, it also acts as strong oxidizing agent. Hot oh. H2SO4 also acts as strong oxidizing agent. The reason will be the same. Okay. So let me move to the next page. Then let's move. Uh, let's see now the very important preparation. That is actually the. <clears throat> that is actually okay. Uh, Please. But before discussing the laboratory method of preparation, let me uh, tell the preparation from the bases, right? Reaction of metal with base. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reaction so of preparation. No. There is the next preparation. You can just number it. What was the numbering? Four. Okay, let me write it as four. Reaction of metals with four, base. Four. We did so base. much before that. Bro, we did okay, no process. Wow, all you that was. Can your own numbering. These are alkali. One for example, if you, never mind, never mind. For example, if you have zinc and you are treating it with alkali like sodium hydroxide, and you hatch. This uncle is not so, turning on his camera. Yes, bad. Sankal, you have not turned. Just turn it on. Sankal. You're there. Closing it like Tarun, sir. Closing the camera. Hey. Like it's because I didn't wash my face. Yeah, that's yes, I don't Even then, nobody can see. See now here. Okay. Uh, now, sodium. Uh, this will yeah, be the salt. Just... That is your sodium. Oh. Yeah. Sodium, sodium zincate. And then you will get the hydrogen also here. This is known as sodium zincate. Sodium zincate. So zincate is a Similarly, zincate is here just uh, one of the anion here. It's actually uh, ZN twice negative. Yeah, exactly. Two, two negative. Two negative, exactly. If you will just ionize it, I will write it here the ions. Ions will be any positive twice, and you will get the ZN O2 two negative. This is known and as balance, zincate. So, so, so it's, it's two NaOH. That's yeah, it. Okay, now yeah, you can just balance it by writing two twice any OH. So I hope that same type of reaction you can tell me in case of beryllium, that is BE. Can you tell me the reaction with sodium hydroxide? Um, so BE plus NaOH gives NA2EO2 plus H2, sir. Plus beryllium. Yeah, it's known as yeah, B is sodium beryllium. beryllium. Berylate. It is known as sodium berylate. Strawberry. <laughs> sir, same sodium balancing, sir. Just one. Yeah, exactly. Before any yeah, two before any OH. So it is here sodium zincate, What's and here it will be the sodium. Oh, yeah. I Beryllium got is a zero, right? It's, it's a metalloid, right? Beryllium is a metalloid, right? Sir? No. Yeah. Wait, yeah. it, it, can, it, can shows, it shows a valency of four. Wait, wait, wait a second. Yeah, it shows a valency of four. So it's metalloid? Beryllium is just, you can see here, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium. It is just your 
yes sir. group second element so all these are metals but beryllium has some non metallic property so you can just treat it as a metalloid yes yeah, sure. yeah yeah exactly okay Absolutely. now can you tell me very, very important that is the aluminum can you tell me the reaction of aluminum with noh this is very important reaction this is asked in the exam sir. so easy sir sodium aluminate plus hydrogen but but see here here you have to remember that this uh, aluminum also uh, reacts here with the water there should be moisture that is the water but i do not care yeah. sir nalo no nalo2 or oh, also, also needs water yeah it also so, needs the water so it will form nalo2 plus h2 plus h2 exactly can you balance this ट How was it meta aluminate? So it's AlO two is aluminate only, so normal aluminate. No, no, it is not the normal because aluminium its valence is three. See beryllium and zinc, they are just having the two valency, but aluminium is having three valency. So this is the difference. That is why reaction is also going in the different way. So you have to remember that this aluminium its valence is three. Sure. So have you noted down this? Yes. Yes. Sir. Sir. Shall I move to the next page? So, but I didn't write yes, it down yet. Okay, yes, okay, right now. Slow boat. Can you explain once again why does it need water? I told that aluminium. It is actually see aluminium. If we just compare it from the zinc, can you tell me which is more reactive? Is it zinc or aluminium? No, it is the aluminium. No, aluminium. Sorry, sir. Yeah, exactly. Magnesium aluminium is aluminium. more. Aluminium. Yeah, and here since it forms the meta aluminate, so moisture is required here. Reaction takes place in presence of water. Moisture is required here. Yeah. Okay. Shall I move to the next page? Yes, sir. Okay. Then let's see very important preparation. That is actually the laboratory method of preparation. how we prepare it in the lab laboratory method of preparation so that means in the lab how we can prepare this dihydrogen a reaction we have already studied just we are just uh, just explaining it in more detailed way what is the reaction reaction is the same that you have studied reaction of zinc with dilute h2so4 Isn't it? Have we studied this reaction? Yes, sir. It was. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. It was so. Much. Yes. So that means this same reaction is it is actually carried out in lab, and we get the we prepare the hydrogen. So let's see it in detail. So we get the zinc sulfate here. We get the hydrogen gas. Wait, wait. So I wrote in my book Zn uh, Zn plus two H two so four is Mg Cl two plus H two so. Nothing. Yeah, you have to. You have to, sir. I just created an atom, sir. Okay. See, zinc. It is just treated with this uh, dilute H two S O four, and uh, this here it should be zinc should be granulated. This is very important. Zinc should be granulated. Yes. Are you getting what do you mean by this granulated it's zinc? Like um, small, 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 small stones. Exactly. S small, small pieces, stones, pebbles, pebbles. right? Pebbles. Yeah. yeah. Like that. So granulated. There should be granules. There should be pores, right? Small holes, pores inside it. Now, what if what was that? Canal. If if we are just canal not using different. the granule, if if yeah, canal. That is the different canal. So if we are not just using this uh, uh, granulated zinc, then reaction will be uh, very slow, right? Sir. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see how it is actually uh, carried out in the laboratory. So in the lab, we are just having 
and there is a uh, thistle funnel okay i will just write make it here i hope you can also draw this so the, those are canals Rachel. no 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 i will just make it first diagram you also try to make it then i will tell you uh, it's a battery no it's not it is a thistle funnel. I will tell you. Uh, yes. It's a just a reaction bottle in which reaction is carried out. It's a reaction bottle in which reaction is carried out. So it's like a round bottom, a bottom flask like that. It is just like that. Yeah, you can see it. But this is a different type. It is known as thistle funnel. I'll write it here. I know what thistle funnel is. Yeah, thistle funnel. I don't know what it is okay see here what we actually do here uh, we just take the dilute h2so4 in this and it just goes into this bottle right this is here the dilute h2so4 yeah. so and we have just also yeah nothing so nothing okay so what are these uh white uh, these are the zinc the granules right zinc. yes sir. Yeah. zinc granules yes sir. okay now there is also another funnel here a glass funnel fix it we just take is the hydrogen gas which is actually formed here that will be just pass it through this and it will just just shift it into the water water tub so, but why is there it is an and just like this we can just take a normal beaker put some zinc okay okay I'll tell you. because hydrogen formed it is a gas if it is normal open beaker then gas will just go into the air we have collected this hydrogen gas how we can collect if it is closed right okay. are you getting this whole bottle yes. it is closed yes. yeah because oh, like hydrogen gas uh, formed that will just go into this yeah hydrogen gas if we are just carrying it in an open beaker then hydrogen gas will just escape it will go into the into the atmosphere but we have to collect it so how to collect i will tell it here yes you close that also and like i got a jar of hydrogen you guys want take it or leave it so here we just collect this Jars of hydrogen in the laboratory. Yes. They just keep jars of hydrogen and other radioactive stuff no. in the laboratory. We don't keep there because hydrogen it's highly flammable, highly combustible gas, and hydrogen has very high calorific value. It it catches fire. We don't keep such gases in the lab, which easily catch the fire. So that's why we are not keeping it there. We, we are what just preparing it labs, but, like actual not school labs but scientific labs. yeah yeah there will be exactly there will be can you tell me is screen visible to all of you yes sir, it's visible sir. um now it's great hmm. ah now we can see it okay yes, okay sir. now see here yeah see uh, this is here the water tub that means it is just the water here in which this hydrogen gas formed is passed here so hydrogen it will just bubble it will come out in the form of bubbles and these bubbles they can be easily collected here at the top so this is here the hydrogen gas here oh so the hydrogen so this, doesn't go back inside the thing exactly exactly so that is why we are just having this apparatus so, in but our why lead. does it go to the water when it just can stay in that tube itself no actually see there are some impurities impure gases so that is why we are first passing it through the this uh, water so that we can get the pure hydrogen gas oh okay uh, yeah in the lay in the lab laboratory you have to remember that whenever whenever we are preparing any gas it is always collected above water it's always collected above water so that we can get the pure gas uh, sorry i have told you here that this is known as thistle funnel but it's actually one of the Mm, a little bit different it is known as wolf's bottle you will write it here 
I will write it here. I will write it here. It is known as Wolf's border. W O U. Why it's not writing? Yeah, it's known as Wolf's border. Yes. Uh, I hope you will remember the name of this. This border is known as Wolf's border. Wolf's funnel or border. So have you put it down this? Have you made this diagram? Yes, sir. Okay, then remember the name of this. It is known as Wolf's border. The name? Yeah, it is the name of this bottle in which there is just oh. this funnel in which we are just passing the dilute as to SO4 and there is another glass funnel yes, through which we are yes. just collecting this hydrogen. Yes. So this is the laboratory method of preparation. So a few points which you had to remember here that is H2SO4 taken is dilute. It is not concentrated. And similarly, uh, it is not hot. It is. Uh, I have told you that if we are just taking the hot H2SO4, then there will be sulfur dioxide gas formed. Then there will be water. There will not be the hydrogen gas, right? Yes. Another thing which I have told that is that this zinc. Yeah, tell me. Sir, the I know next what class starts, sir. <laughs> okay, fine. So we have just uh, discussed these preparations. I hope you will go through these and you will remember all, all these preparations. They are important. So, okay, let's stop then today's class here. Have a nice day, Hajj. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Most welcome. Bye.